Back in mid-1990s, when I was still a novice at using computers, I didn't play many games on the PC because I spent nearly all my time programming instead. But one of those that I did play was Duna Blaster. Which is totally not Bomberman. I mean, you clearly don't have randomly generated rooms with enemies that vary from balloons with faces on them to various kind of blobs with faces on them, and you clearly do not place bombs that can be fired in chains and... Okay, seriously, this is Bomberman. But in the Europe, this game released for MS-DOS, Amiga and Atari ST was rebranded as Duna Blaster. And this game contains a password system. It looks like this. You can input 8 letters selected from the English 26 letter alphabet. If your input is wrong, the input is cleared and you have to try again. The input method is also quite slow since you can't just type but you have to navigate the cursor as if this was an arcade game. Let's study what goes into the password. The game has 64 levels, divided into 8 areas, each of which has 8 rooms. You can collect a number of classic power-ups, such as more powerful bombs, more bombs, running ability, remote detonator, pass-through bombs, and so on. If you lose a life, you get to keep the pump power level, the number of bombs, and the running ability, and start from the same level, but everything else, including the score, is reset to zero. And these aspects are saved in the password too. Back in 1990s, I was not able to crack this password system because it was just too slow to try different combinations and I ran out of patience. I tried disassembling the game too. However, I quickly learned that something is going on. There does not seem to be any plausible code anywhere. For the most part, none of this disassembly makes sense. I mean, obviously the disassembler is going to output something, because almost all bytes map into some CPU instructions, but this cannot be real programming code. So I run UNP on the binary. UNP is an excellent tool written by Ben Kastrikum, which is capable of decompressing most DOS EXE files compressed using compressors written before 1995, and so is the case here. It detects that the game is compressed using LZXE and successfully decompresses it. And now if I disassemble the binary, I can actually find code that makes sense. If you work with assembler code, you will quickly learn to recognize code that makes sense and tell it apart from disassembly of random data. Now, because EXE files are relocatable code, the next step would be to use a disassembler that can actually reconstruct the code segments and separate them from data. For this purpose, I did some Google searching and ended up downloading a program called Semblance. Back in the DOS days, I used something else, but I no longer have that tool, and the open source and cross-platform program called Semblance will do just fine for this purpose. When I run it on the decompressed Dinoplaster exe file, it produces an assembler listing which I can open in a text editor. However, finding the password code in it is not that simple. It's not like I can just search for password in it. I mean, I can figure out something. For example, this code seems to be updating the VGA palette. It outputs bytes into I.O. ports, and port number 3C9 happens to be the VGA graphics card's DAC data register. This stuff was the bread and butter of graphics programming in the 1990s, so I can easily recognize it on site. But to find a code that deals with password is not that easy. Back in 1990s, this is where I got stuck. But now, almost 25 years later, the story doesn't have to end here. I have different tools in my toolbox now. I was already running this game in DOSBox, which is an emulator for the PC, but I need a version of DOSBox that has the debugger built in. I am using Debian GNU Linux, and the debug-enabled DOSBox can be installed with a single command. And now when I run it, there is a debugger window behind the emulator window. I will hit Ctrl F1 to study the keyboard mapper of DOSBox for a bit. I select the debugger option, and I notice the key mapping for debugger is mod 2, which is ALT plus pause. Alright, moving on. Click exit to exit the key mapper and resume the emulator. Now the game is running. Let's enter the password screen and enter a simple password. B -b 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 -b. I am going to wait until the music stops, so that the music will not interfere with what I am going to do. Now I am going to hit ALT-PAUSE to enter the debugger. 
watch the data segment value ds. I will do this several times. F5 to resume the game. Alt pause. F5, alt pause. F5, alt pause. And so on. The value of DS seems to stay the same. If the music player was still active, the DS value would vary between different breakpoints, but now the password engine is the only part of the game running, so the data segment stays the same. B07. This is the primary data segment that the game focuses on while on the password screen. On the screen it says type help to get an overview of all commands. Here it says use home end buttons to scroll. What I want to do is write the data segment contents into a file. I will call this file a.txt. Then let's resume the game and make some changes. Replace the password with abcdefg and enter the debugger again. Do a second memory dump. And compare these two dumps. Sure, there are still plenty of irrelevant differences between these two, but look here! The first one has 8 62s in a row, while the second has 8 successive values 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67 and 68. Just like the password that I inputted. This is where the game stores the password you are inputting. It begins at address 32B5. There were also other differences. Off-screen using this same exact process, I identified the addresses for the password cursor X and Y positions and the password character position. Now let's get back to the assembler listing. Search for the address 32B5. Alright, the first piece seems to copy 8 bytes into the password from some unidentified RAM address. Let's ignore that for now. This next part takes the password buffer address, adds the password cursor position, and places a byte into the resulting address. In other words, it changes a character in the password. This seems to be part of the password user interface. Let's go up a bit. Ok, here it seems to be comparing the selector cursor position. If the Y coordinate is different from 2, it reaches this spot, and if the Y coordinate was 2, then it checks if the X coordinate is 8, 7 or 6. These must be the left arrow, right arrow and end positions respectively. If the X coordinate was none of these, it continues with the character input. Ok, so let's jump to where it gets if the X coordinate was 8. That is 28C8. And that jumps to 29E7. This must be the part that validates the password. Ok, first it checks if the password is blank, that is, it consists of 8 spaces. If it was blank, it does this. Otherwise it continues from here. Now it copies the 8 character buffer into a different address, 30E5. Then it calls another function. If the return value of that function is non-zero, it wipes out the password by writing 8 blanks into it. So I guess that's the failure and the other branches for the success. Let's check out the function that it uses for the validation, which is at OE26. It sets the source index as 3OE5, which is the copy of the password, and destination index is 2117. It's building something in 2117. Then it loads a character from the password copy and calls some function. Again, the return value is checked. This time, if the return value is negative, it bails out and continues otherwise. Let's check what that function does, OF72. Alright, so it takes the lowest bits of BX and multiplies that by 16. Then it initializes the counter register with value 16 and performs some kind of loop. In that loop it adds 2 OCF to the value of BX, loads a character and compares that byte to the character that was supplied as a parameter. Hmm, I wonder what's in that address, 2 OCF. Let's check the commands in DOSBox again. I want to adjust the memory view window over here, and the command to do that is D followed by the segment colon offset. The segment is the data segment as before, B07. The offset in question is 2OCF. Ah, that is weird. It seems to contain four 16 character strings. Ok, so it searches the character in one of these 16 character tables and returns the index where it was found. If the character was not found, it returns minus 1. 
This function is called twice. With the first character and the second character, the two return values are merged into a single byte at address 2117. This process is repeated four times until all eight characters have been converted and packed into four bytes. So far, so good. It seems it is our good friend the substitution cipher, except that the cipher is different for each byte. This data is then packed into 4 bytes. These 4 bytes could be thought as a 32-bit integer or a double word. Then it loads the first byte and takes the top 3 bits from that byte. If the top bit is non-zero, it inverts byte 3 of the password. Then the next bit is checked and the byte index is decremented. This process is repeated 3 times for each of the top 3 bytes. Then it loads the first byte again and checks that the middle two bits are 1 and 0 respectively. If they are not, the password is rejected. Finally, the lowest three bits are taken. This value is passed to some function at OF49. And that function loops and rotates bits. If you are an experienced assembler programmer, by now you are already screaming, this is horrible code! It is as if it was produced by a compiler that does absolutely no optimizations whatsoever. Which is probably not far off, considering that the whole game, Bomberman, was originally just a demo by Hudson Soft for their basic compiler. I mean, look at this! On the left side is the code from Duna Blaster, and the right side is my handwritten copy of the same function. Both of these routines do the same thing. And the whole game is like this! Anyway, when we carry out the code analysis to its end, this is what we get. First, this is the encryption code that we just saw. The three lowest bits of the first byte specify the shift count, and the other three bytes are rotated right by that number of bits. Zeros are shifted in from the left side, and bits from the right side are discarded. Then the data is extracted from the resulting double word. I know, this graph looks like a mess, so let's break it down. Six data items are extracted from the password. The two-digit level number, the number of bombs, the explosion length, a flag that indicates the running power-up, and a humming wake of everything else combined. Humming wake is also called a population count or the number of one bits. The data item bits are not stored sequentially in the password, but they are all over the place. The humming weight or the number of bits is particularly interesting. When the password is encoded, the game puts to this field the number of bits that were set in all of the five other operands. But when decoding, the issue is different. Remember the rotation? When the password is encoded, the bits are shifted left, and when the password is decoded, the bits are shifted right. Because they are shifted, not rotated, the upper bits of the password will become permanently lost and replaced with zeros. And look what is in the upper bits. There is all kinds of vital information there. During playtesting, some programmer Yuji Muroya likely noticed that the password he generates are not actually getting decoded properly. Data is getting lost. Rather than fixing the design problem in the password, he settled on a workaround. Instead of generating rotation counts between 0 and 7, he only generates them between 0 and 1. This way, the only bit that gets potentially lost is this one bit in the humming weight variable. But now he ran into a second problem. The humming weight, read from the password, does not actually match the number of bits set in the password. He solved this problem by not verifying the exact bit count, but that the saved bit count is less than 16. In other words, he only checks that the most significant bit of the humming weight is zero. The rest of the bits are essentially unused. I mean, there were unused bits in the password. They are the upper two bits of byte 1. The game always generates these two bits as zero. Maybe he originally intended that these bits are a safe buffer against the bit shifting, but he made a mistake. And because of his mistake, there are now many more meaningless bits in the password. Now the data items in this password are fairly simple. The level number sign 1 to 8 range. The password fails to match if something else was given. All the other values can use the full range. However, the maximum number of bombs is actually 8. 
any value that is outside 1 to 8 range just means 8. Related to the bomb count, I actually found a bug in the game. Likely this is already very well known, but I thought it's worth mentioning anyway. Once you acquire the ability to work through explosions, if there is an explosion going on, you can place as many additional bombs as you want, even if you have just one bomb, and the bomb limit will be permanently maximized until the end of the room. The maximum being 8, that is. Now here is the password converter I wrote for this game. It handles all the special cases correctly and reports whether the password is authentic or not. You can download it through the link in the video description if you like to study it. I also created a list of English language passwords in this game. Surprisingly there are not that many. All of them are fake in that the game will never generate them, but it will accept them. Well, all except the last eight, which are somewhat questionable compound words that I included to get at least some non-fake passwords on this list. In any case, these passwords work not only with the DOS version, but also on other versions such as on the Amiga. And look at that, we happen to have one right here, thanks to my colleague Tony Rosendahl. Tony, if you, be, if you would be so kind. Okay, of course. So let's take a look at the game on Amiga. So it's loading from a USD, USB stick, but it's simulating a floppy disk yeah, or something? Yeah. It's, uh, it's like a floppy disk. It emulates it and uh, the speed is pretty much the same than the floppy disk. Which should be... Moveless. Yeah, move less please. Okay, let's try. Entering the alphabets using the joysticks, it's a little bit difficult, but... Uh, Moonless. And let's see what happens. Okay, it seems to have accepted the password, so loading. Well, let's see what ha what happens. I don't think anyone has ever entered this password before. <laughs> States 3 and 3. And it works as you can see. I am Biscuit. The next time... I'm not sure what we are going to do the next time. Maybe you have good ideas. But in any case, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.